All right, hello once again. Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. I have been coming at you with a series of video presentations that are based on the PowerPoint slides for Murox HTML4 and CSS3 3rd, 4th edition. And this is one of the two textbooks that's used for the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000, AWD for Application Web Development 1000 course which is called web development technologies okay I'm up to chapter 14 of 20 and it's a short chapter on how to use audio and video or how to add it to your website now before we go over that the first thing I quickly want to do is from the last chapter where we worked on forms I want to take everything that I had here for the form all right so I'm going to take all of this oops CSS that I put in this is the form specific stuff and I'm now gotten rid of it so that's good and I want to take my form and I want to comment that out because this chapter is no longer on forms this chapter is on audio and video so when I come back into here right now there's really let's put an h1 tag in here We'll put in audio and video. And ideally, when we go back and we run this, that's the only thing that's going to be there. There we go. All right, so we're starting fresh, so to speak. All right, so what you'll find when you start using audio and video is they're very similar as far as their tag structure and what you have to do, etc. We'll talk a little bit about some of the media types, different players, and what are called codecs. All right, and we'll get into what that means in just a bit. Typically, typically rather, you'll want to have more than one audio type or more than one video type. We'll talk about why well, that's the case. All right, the biggest problem that you have as we look here at the common media types for video and audio is there's not 100% agreement among different browsers or different browser you know people who create them so there's not 100% agreement between Microsoft Edge and Internet Explorer and Firefox and Chrome and Opera etc as to what types of video and audio will be supported some of them support one type and not another some of these types that you see in here are more standard and, and like OG was designed to, to basically handle anything from any browser but not every browser supports it so for instance now I showed you this URL a long time ago but I'm going to bring it up again anyway that was that HTML5 patterns and this was the regular expressions but I'm going to come in here and I'm going to bring up can I use com remember can I use com so I can come in here and I don't know if it'll take OG Right? But when you look, OG format, look at all the red. Safari doesn't handle it. IE doesn't handle it. All right, Edge version 17 and above does, etc. This is what you're going to see when you put in these different types. How about MP3? And you'll notice, by and large, most newer browsers handle mp3 which I believe is just video when I create my audio I'm sorry mp3 is just uh, audio when I create my presentations they're created in mp4 which is audio and video <coughs> all right but just to, that's just like a prelude to try to show you some of the potential problems that we have using this all right same thing with the codex and we're going to get into what codex coding and decoding in, in a little bit different kinds of mime types I already mentioned to you mp3 and mp4 so what a media player does when it plays a video first it determines the media type the user is attempting to play then next it determines whether it has the capability of playing that <clears throat> if it does 
is it decodes the video and displays it on the screen. Then it decodes the audio and sends it to the computer's speakers. And it interprets any extra metadata that's up there and it makes it available. Now, notice Miro Video Converter converting MP3 to AUG. That's no big thing. But what I want to show you is really probably the easiest way that you can go and you can put something in here. So let, let's do this. I'm going to come out here and I'm going to go to YouTube. <clears throat> dot com and in YouTube I'm going to find a video by here's the president okay so I'm going to grab that try to grab that video and there it is now I'm not going to say anything about political aff affiliations or anything else but what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to come in here and I'm just going to add basically I'm going to add a simple a href equals I'm going to put in that path all right and I'm going to say president trump video Will this work? There's only one way to find out. So let's run this. All right, I click, and what happens? Day 748 there it is. of the Trump administration. The president's battle to fend off the investigations threatening right. his office. Doesn't look like I've got a way to stop it. Oh, there it stopped. But the easiest way to bring in this kind of stuff is to just sit there and put it in href. Right, I'm going to comment that out. Right here. Just wanted to show you how easy it can be to do this. So, typically that's no, though it's not how it's done. Typically you use, as it says here, object and param elements. Object will hold type, data, width, and height, and the param will hold name and value. So I'm going to I'm going to grab this one, all right, and <clears throat> we're going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we're going to try this. I'm not going to use their video because I don't have access to it. So I'm going to try to put this into here. It's going to be a little different if this works, so we're going to try it. So we've got object. It's an MP4. The data is what it is you want to play. All right. But I'm going to change this. So rather than this path, I'm going to play you what I just recorded from the last chapter. We're going to see if it works. I've never tried doing this before. But, you know, live and learn, right? This is the one I just did. That is the path. So I'm going to have to change the path to this. And then a slash, and now I have to put in the name of the file. And it's an MP4 file. Like I said, this very may very well not work, or it might work. All right, so let's save and let's run this. 
No, that isn't a good start. There we go. So notice what I have in here. All right, so once again, this is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College going through a series of video presentations. So I'm going to add those. It now has the blue highlight. All right. I'm using a mouse to get their way around the screen. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's. All right. So that was a way to very quickly go in and drop in one of my videos. Okay, so what did I do here? Well, I came in and I said I use the object tags. All right. I said the type of video I'm playing is an MP4 and it's a video. The data, this is where that file exists. You see it's an MP4. I wanted the width of my screen to be 480, the height to be 270. I wanted it to automatically start playing. Okay. So that's just some of the things that you can do. Again, <clears throat> you're all bright people who are watching this video. And what I want to tell you is, you know, I'm just giving you my take on some of the stuff that's in here. All right. So the embed has type source, width, and height, which I just showed you. There is an embed that plays a YouTube video. Let's try that one. Again, I won't use their video because I'm not... Uh, it actually should work if that video is still out there on YouTube. So we'll try that. I'm going to take what I've got here, the one I just did of mine, and I'm going to comment it out. I'm going to add this one. Again, if this YouTube video does not exist, I'll probably get an error when I try to play this. There it is. That's yeah, out there. By Scott Sampson. He is a paleontologist and an evolutionary and you'll notice biologist. And that I can click YouTube, and go right back out to and YouTube. Also, he is GSA's winner of this year's public service. All right, or I can watch it right on here. Okay, this is that Scott guy from from their book. Okay. Common attributes for audio and video elements. Source, where you're getting it from. Poster, you can kind of, while it's loading, you can have a picture come up, kind of like they have in front of a movie theater, um, you know, to show you the, the movie that's playing inside. Preloads, you can set that up so that when, by the time the um, browser opens, hopefully it'll all be loaded. Autoplay, you already saw. Loop will tell it to play over and over again. Mute. Muted, tell it to mute. Controls will add controls like start, stop, and pause. Width and height, I already showed you. All right. And these are things for that source element. The source, where I put my file name, and the type, which was MP4. So, again, the easiest way to add this, very similar to what I showed you before. All right. That's just dropping in a URL. So, again... There is not universal agreement, so you might have to put in several of these. All right, so you might have to include OG, you know, etc., Theora, WebM, etc. Here's a page right here that has both audio at the top. Notice no video, but they've added controls and audio video at the bottom. All right, and here is the code that goes along with that. Okay. Now, that was very quick. I'm not sure how much audio and video we're going to put into the actual website that we create. My goal, when I actually create this website, this gym site, it's going to be a heck of an endeavor. All right. And my goal is to include something from every chapter in both the HTML4, I'm sorry, HTML5 and CSS3 fourth edition book, and the JavaScript and jQuery second edition book. So that's what I'll be shooting for. All right, that's it for this chapter. When I come back and do the next chapter, the next couple, I'll be doing chapter 15, which is on how to work with fonts and printing, and also chapter 16 which is on how to use CSS3 transitions, transforms, animations, and filters. All right.
be back with those soon.